thank you very much for being here today. Welcome. And uh, hopefully we'll get more people gathered over here as soon as they grab their drinks and come over here. So before I get started, I really want to set some expectations. You can expect to have three things that you'll learn here today. I will tell you by the end of the session how you can receive $100,000 worth of consulting services for free. So that's number one. Number two, you will hear a success story coming out from one of our customers about their journey to the cloud. And third, I might make you rethink about your considerations or approach to the digital transformation. So with that, are you ready to get started? I could hear. Are you ready to get started? All right. So, let's get started talking a little about the digital future. The many studies that you have come across probably already, the studies that's happening all the time, talking about what does the digital future look like. Let me tell you one thing. Everybody that's attending this session right here, or the live stream, let me tell you that in the next three to five years, you will be in a different business or possibly a completely different industry if you do not upgrade your skills. I guarantee you that. So digital disruption is happening at a pace like never before. The marketplace is getting disrupted. Companies are getting disrupted on a daily basis. But it's creating tremendous amount of new opportunities and possibilities. I came across a very interesting study, uh, in fact, last week, uh, research which talks about by 2025, more than half of the world has today will be taken over by machines. That's less than seven years away. And it could be a very scary feeling, but the study goes on to say that not only it's going to be replacing those jobs, which would be about 75 million jobs globally, but it's also going to create about 133 million new jobs. So I'm a firm believer that with each transformation, there's new opportunity that comes in. But you need to retool, reskill, and rethink where you're going with this journey. It's very important in the digital future that you really think like a startup company. The old traditional way of driving business does not work anymore. You do not have to be an expert in all the areas yourself. You have to find ways how you can leverage your entire ecosystem, your partners, vendors, even your competitors to leverage what they've got to co-create together, co-innovate, to drive new business value. That's the new thing of this digital era. That's why it's important that you need to think big you need to start small because like a startup company, you want to try out new things. It's okay to fail so that you can quickly learn from there and start over again. So agility is extremely, extremely important. And then you have to learn from your mistakes, but scalability is something that is very, very critical because of the reach and what we need to accomplish. Moving on, I'd like to talk about next, our relationship with Microsoft. We've been partners with Microsoft for many, many years, for over 30 years now. And we are one of the largest global partners with Microsoft. So the unique things that we bring along to you as a customer when we collaborate and work together is our approach to how we bring solutions together, leveraging our co-creation approach. We are able to not only help you with your digital transformation on the advisory side, but actually help you transform and thereafter continue to optimize your operations. And I will explain a little bit more about that in the subsequent slides. And then we continue to also support you through managed services. And there's a lovely quote uh, that we recently got from Gabriela, which shows how we are continuing to strengthen our partnership to help in the customers in their digital transformation journey. So the picture that you see over here is the hyper-connected world. You know, everything is connected to everything today. You know, all devices are talking to each other. People are connected like never before. Organizations are connected like never before. So 
I think what's very important to look at in this digital transformation journey is this enormous amounts of data all over the place. How do you secure that? How do you find value from the data that you're collecting from all these enormous objects all around you that are continuously tracking you? So you all must have seen the amount of enhancement that has happened in the space of AI. Right? And to some people, it could be, you know, they think this could be a very dangerous thing. People are concerned. What does it do to all the jobs? What does it do to mankind? At Fujitsu, we really think it differently. Our approach to bringing AI or driving any of these digital transformation solutions is keeping people at home, driving the human-centric approach in bringing our solutions to our customers and the world over here. So we truly believe that AI is really, when you really put people and the human beings at the core of what you're defining and developing, you are more successful. People are actually looking for a better customer ex uh, experience, not only a better customer experience, they actually want it quick. They want it to be tailored just exactly what they need for their own need. And people do not have the uh, time anymore to spend and find out, well, is it going to work or not? If it works, it works, otherwise they're going to move on to something else. So again, I think our approach is to really keep people at the core of what we're doing. That's our human centric approach. Let me talk to you a little bit too about how we bring all these solutions together when we are talking about digital transformation. There are four key value proposition areas that we bring to our customers. The first one that I like to talk about is simplify. So when we, this is all our advisory services, when we look at our customers, we're looking at the existing current landscape of applications that you might have. We help create the roadmap and build the journey to the cloud. We are actually working along with you to define a journey, of, journey to the cloud which is very, very specific for you and not a generic one uh, that does not fit your criteria. Next. Once we help create that roadmap, we actually help you move to the cloud through our modernized uh, solutions. This is where we actually help customers bring, come from legacy mainframe, bridge platform to a cloud enabled platform. We help customers come from uh, on prem solution to the cloud solution. The cloud solution could be a public, private, or a hybrid nature. We do support truly what's best for your organization. Once you are there in the cloud, we continue to engage with you to find how we can continue to optimize your operations because that's where we need to find how we find our efficiencies. Continually improve the workflows and how the business value we are bringing to your organization. Once we're done with the optimize, the final piece is really the exciting piece where we bring in our digitalized solution. This is where we are actually talking about making the organization more global, mobile, and social. So we implement all the IoT solutions, all the other digital technologies. So this is how we support end-to-end -end our customers uh, in their life cycle journey. But next I'd like to talk about the digital muscles. It's actually just like an athlete. It's extremely important to have real strong digital muscles. You know, like an athlete, you know, they continue to tone up their muscles, work on ensuring that they stay uh, fit to be able to compete in the modern era, in their races and stay ahead of their competition. It is important to do the same in the digital space as well as when you are uh, talking about the transformation journey. But there are six attributes that we come across any organization, irrespective of their industry, irrespective of their geography that we see. Leadership, people, agility, business integration, ecosystem, and value data. Let me talk a little bit about each one of them. So leadership is extremely important that your organization's C-level executives are totally committed to the journey, to the digital path, to the digital future, whatever you're creating for your organization. It's extremely important to have the right people that really understands your business and people that are committed to make the digital journey successful. People are a very key part of it. And then bringing in the human-centric approach is very essential to have that component. Agility, like I mentioned, you know, time is of the sense. People want things really quickly and fast. And you want to be able to change as you go, as you find out new opportunities, new ways of doing things. Business integration, again, digital co-creation is all about blending your business experience along with digital technology. It's not a technology product. It's actually blending both of those together. So involving and engaging your business partners is extremely important. 
ecosystems, you do not have to know all the answers by yourself. Leverage your partners, your vendors, even your competitors to join together and bring in new value. Data, there's so much of data that's getting collected. What's important for you to, as an organization is to understand what's important for you. What are you going to do with this data? So finding true value from the data that you're collecting because in the new world, at one time, oil was king. Data is king today. So find the best way to utilize your data. Next, I would like to welcome on stage uh, one of the very successful uh, fearless CIO, I would say, uh, Jacqueline Brunhold from uh, Advancix to talk about their journey to the cloud. And we've been partnering with uh, Advancix for the last two years uh, plus now, and it has been a great story, and I'm sure Jackie will help us talk to this. Thank, Thank you. It's great to be here with you today. Hope you're enjoying the night. I'll keep this brief, because I keep hearing the cheers going on out there. It sounds like there's a lot of fun somewhere else. Um, but I want to share with you uh, a few tidbits from the Advanced Six story. Um, I come to conferences like Ignite or Envision because I want to understand better the vision of how technology is going to continue to change our world and how that affects the way that we think about our digital strategy at Advanced Six. But I also think about the practical aspects of what we do every day and how we can do those better. And it's there that I'd like to leave you with uh, hopefully a few tidbits today. So um, as you know, I'm Jackie Grunwald. I'm the CIO of Advanced 6. Maybe you haven't heard of, of Advanced 6. We're a vertically integrated uh, manufacturer of nylon. We use our advantage chemistries to um, produce our products across our sites in a way that creates saleable byproducts. So we also make ammonium sulfate, which is a, a fertilizer, and we make another, a number of other um, chemical intermediates. So we were born, we were IPO'd as a public company two years ago when we were spun off of Honeywell. Um, so we're a startup, but we're also a very old company. Our uh, roots go back to the H.W. Jane Company, which was founded in the late 1800s. We have customer partnerships that have lasted longer than 60 years. And from a technology perspective, we have this technical debt in terms of age, application, and infrastructure assets that were run on prem. So the spin-off created this opportunity to do something with those assets. At a minimum, we had to get them out of the data center that no longer belonged to us. And I'm sure my team would attest to the fact that the easiest thing to do would be to find another data center and put them there. But um, the problem with that is coming out of a, a large company, we we're losing those economies of scale. So the cost is going to increase, uh, increase dramatically. And this is a huge project. It's time intensive, resource intensive, cost intensive, that was going to yield no benefit. So we looked at this as a transformation opportunity that would allow us to actually yield benefits. So, so the way that we thought about it was with three strategies. I'm not actually advancing the slides here, sorry. Um, so the strategies that we thought about were uh, first, fit for purpose, and be cyber secure. So, SaaS opportunities seem obvious. We're all in with, with Office 365. Uh, we did a, a process to, to look at all of our business processes and our application footprint and really drill down to what was the core of what was important to our business. But when we did that, we were still left with, with an age SAP asset that was core to our business and these key manufacturing applications that you can't run. There's no SaaS alternative for this. So, we started thinking about infrastructure as a service, IAS. And that's where Fujitsu really enters the picture for us because we didn't have that internal knowledge and capability. But Fujitsu brought that to bear. And to make a, a story short here, nine months later, we realized that transformation. We were running our application workloads almost entirely um, on the cloud. I guess I don't want to do it simply yet. Um, smooth way, we upgraded those assets, we had converted and upgraded the SAP asset to HANA and are running that smoothly and securely on this year. So, uh, what that did for us 
is it could help future proof. And it brought a number of benefits uh, for us. So first of all, uh, we were able to uh, maintain and even increase our level of security. The availability performance has been great. Uh, we've been live for just under six months, but the early results show that our costs have actually decreased to run this by more than 10%, which is a great outcome when we were looking at a cost increase for our situation. The other thing we get is this agility, this ability to scale up and down on demand. So if you think about an SAP environment, sometimes I want a sandbox in order to test new software. In the old environment, a non-prem environment, if I wanted that infrastructure, I had to procure it permanently and keep it there all the time, even though I wouldn't use it all the time. Now if I want a sandbox, we spool that up, we run our tests, we spool it back down. But the thing that I think is the most interesting about the cloud is this idea of efficiency, of a utility. So, uh, you know, we did the same kind of things that a lot of companies did more than a decade ago. We went through and we converted to, to VMs and we saved some money, but we still got this physical server footprint that's there all the time, whether you're using it or not. So what's a little bit different about the cloud, if you, if you think about a utility, right? I mean, when you go back to your hotel room tonight and you flip on the light switch, the light's gonna come on. And in other parts of the world, they have the system in the hotels where you take your key card and you stick it in the slot so that that activates the lights. And when you leave, you're supposed to take the key card with you. So that should ensure that the lights go off and they don't run when you're not there. Or when you, when you go to the tap, when you turn on the faucet, you expect the water's going to come out. And when you're done, you're going to turn it off. That seems to elude my children sometimes, but, um, but for the most part, you don't walk away and leave it running to waste. You shut it off and it's there when you're ready to use it. So think about that from an infrastructure perspective, from a business perspective. We're a chemical manufacturer, it's process manufacturing. So the manufacturing runs 24 seven. We use SAP all the time, but we have an office staff who's only there eight to five, seven to six. Those applications aren't being used all the time. Or my team, my team doesn't develop 24 seven. Why should these systems be on all the time? Why would I need to have my dev environment or my quality assurance environment running all the time if I'm not going to use it? In the on-prem model, if, if you have them, they're there whether you're using them or not. But in the public cloud, in Azure, you can create this kind of governance. You can create a tap system, if you will, so that you can deallocate when you know you're not going to use those applications. And then you can have them set to school back up for the next business day. So even though we're a smaller company now, by using the public cloud, by using Azure and with the, the help of our partner Fujitsu, we're really able to take advantage of the economies of scale of the larger world. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you very much, Jackie. Thank you very much for being a partner. I really appreciate it. So, Again, uh, it's really a great story, great success that we have had together, and we continue. So, I really thank Jackie and Advances for choosing Fujitsu as their digital corporation partner. We look forward to continue to you know, help you be in the digital space more. So, as we see companies like um, Advances, there's still many organizations, many CIOs, many executives that are still struggling to find what their digital transformation journey is going to be. I really encourage you to look back and find who is going to be your co-creation partner. Find your ecosystem. Now, like I said at the beginning of the session that I'm going to tell you how you can win or actually find a way how you would be eligible for $100,000 of water consulting services. I was not just saying it for the reason, sake of saying it. So I would encourage you to drop by our booth at 309. For a limited time, we are actually giving away uh, what we call it as our Azure Total Economic Assessment Program. It's a six-week assessment program that we do to help create a roadmap and journey to your cloud, create the ROI for you so that you can take it forward. I encourage you to talk to our uh, people at the booth and they can help uh, you set up in their journey. And then finally, again, I think uh, it's a really, really exciting world ahead. Let's Create your, find your co-creation partner, and together be bold to move forward and 
and have spin your digital journey quickly because if you don't, they might have to choose a different business or industry altogether. Thank you very much.